<laughs> Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and today is Johnny Depp's birthday, June 9th. We are going to celebrate the man that finally got justice served. We are so happy about it. There's so much media spin and things going out there. But today, I want to try to focus on the positive and celebrate this man and the fact that he got justice served, which is so rare. And I'm so excited because we have a lot of special guests. But man, we're starting with a bang. We got our own. It's Kim. But we also got Pirate's own Greg Ellis. How are you doing? sir i'm doing great thanks andy yes he did it he got his reputation back happy birthday how what a <laughs> present right can you i mean kim welcome sorry I, i'm ignoring you but i'm excited because we got Hello, greg. Kim. greg i'm not important right yeah, now yeah, it's of fine. course you are <laughs> welcome kim so happy to have you back we're all going to celebrate here we're gonna get, but greg i know you know this man you've worked with him uh, you can speculate a little bit more than most can and we can see a picture here taken. I love this shot of the card and a mega, the, the huge wine the glass. Mega pint of wine. He's wine. leaning into it. That's clearly he's you know he's he's enjoying himself. How do you how do you think Johnny is? I don't know if you've talked to him or not, but how do you think Johnny is feeling and celebrating his birthday today after this mega win? Over the moon. I think every single day since May 27, 2016, there's been a boulder placed on his psychological shoulders. And that's just dug him deeper and deeper and deeper. And then that verdict, everything was released from his shoulders. Uh, he can look to the future. He can start making movies again. And all of this can be behind him. Yeah, it's amazing. Kim, I know we've talked about this a lot. We, 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 we've, there's been also just weird spin and things, but let's focus on the positive now. Uh, how big was this for you, Kim, now days later? Are you still processing the fact that this all this work we've been putting out? And, and kudos for your help, Kim. I know so many people have still to this day keep coming to me and say, Andy, you guys were a big part of this. You really spread the word and got all that stuff combined. And I'm, I'm proud and, and thank you to everybody who's done it. But Johnny and the legal team really did it the best. But Kim, how are you feeling after all the work we put into and that we actually got a win here honestly for me um it, it's a whirlwind and in the center of it it is something that i am so proud that i got to be a part of just seeing honestly and i mean on the inside i mean we've had so many people be able to share their stories that have felt brave enough to share what's happened to them and seeing so many people's lives change from our perspective and i'm sure you could back me up on that of the people that we have interacted with that their lives are very different now compared to what they were, you know, eight weeks ago. And that for me is wild and makes every sleepless night <laughs> and panic attack worth it. So I'm so happy to be, you know, on the other side of this now. And uh, I'm so happy for our community. I'm so happy for Johnny. I'm so happy for, for men who, you know, are going through DV and hopefully now they feel like they can have a bit of a voice uh, as well as other survivors, you know, gender, abuse has no gender and i strongly believe that and in a world right now where gender is in some ways a social construct i'm so happy to see that wall coming down because i think it needed to and i'm glad that it's starting to yeah and greg i i i know we're supposed to be positive but i'm just curious your take on things because as we're celebrating wow. as we're celebrating johnny's birthday and he's i feel like taking the high road here he's he's saying he's moving on amber's not have you, have you seen some of this press and some of the stuff that's coming out here in the comments that she said? Uh, yes. Are you surprised? <laughs> No, I did. Look, all I say to that is contrary to what the gaslighters in mainstream media would have us believe, this verdict is not only, as Kim just said, a huge step forward for men, it's a huge step forward for women, the Me Too shields for women victims that have been all too easily fashioned into silver bullets, uh, like the one that fired at Johnny Depp uh, by Amber Heard, that have been literally killing men, literally, not just figuratively, can now be used to help the real victims of domestic violence. If we can focus our resources on those people that need help, the verdict uh, the brilliant verdict will make those who are who are maybe contemplating weaponizing a false allegation to reputation savage their future ex in divorce proceedings possibly possibly we hope think twice about that in the future we'll see but one thing's for sure i think many women particularly women survivors of domestic violence will have a hard time coming to terms with what amber heard has done it's so weird because I've, I've had some arguments online and they're like, oh, no, history will be on Amber's side. And I'm just I'm blown away. And all these people who are fighting that just don't seem to have to watch the trial for one, you know, listen to the audio tapes and the evidence. And they're just so sure that, no, this is this is a, not a step back. But I, I'm with you. And I know you speak for a lot of men you know, for men's rights too, through divorces, et cetera. Um, so, you know, more than most like men get screwed a lot. 
uh, and, and a lot of these situations, I've been falsely accused. Um, the Me Too movement was, I think, important. I, I've never knocked it, but it got... Uh, it just it overdid it right and, and then they, they didn't care about the collateral damage as it was happening I, I was watching it very closely after i got taken down and then as the aziz ansaris and things started coming out we a bad a bad dates became harassment and all this other stuff it just started getting ballooning out of control that you know the, the weight shifted while they had this control they didn't do it properly they had a moment to really i think create some real change but i i, I think that happens with a lot of movements you get you know, power hungry and we got this. Who cares? We're going to keep doing it. And they didn't care who the victims were. They were like, nope, we finally got the control back. Let's do this. Let's do what we can. And I think it's just such a disservice. So I, I thought we were finally getting to this mid level where like people were finally coming to that realization. Right. But it does still seem like we have a long way to go with the media, especially trying to spin this as anything but a win for Mr. Depp. It's it blows my mind. Kim, what, what are your what, what do we do to help uh, make sure that we stay on the proper path here? Do you think? I, I think the best thing we can do ourselves is I think what we've done for a long time, which is we look at the stories, we look at the evidence, and we try to support the survivors. We try to support the people, even when it's not popular, even when, you know, it's it's contrary, that we look at the evidence and go from there. And I think we're going to see um, cases in the future, unfortunately, of abuse in multiple situations. And hopefully we can be a voice that will help elevate those people that need to be elevated, regardless of, of gender or whatever, you know? So, I mean, I think one of the biggest stories that we covered ab about DV was Gabby. Yep. And a huge part of that was, you know, when there were people that said, you know, well, Brian didn't do anything wrong. You don't know. And we were very critical of the evidence that came in and we made our own decision and we supported Gabby and still do 100% and we will continue to support the Petitos, um, you know, as much as we can. And I, I think that, that that is what we do. We continue with that type of spirit. Well, yeah, it's a good example because I, I think there were a lot of people who saw the first body cam footage <laughs> and maybe mm -hmm. believed him. Yeah. And then... As, and that's what happens a lot of times. And then she was, you know, she was irrational. She was emotional. She wasn't taken seriously. And then more, more camera footage and more angles and things started to come out that were like, wait a second. No, they missed a lot. They missed a lot of stuff. And it was, I think that's another reason that case became so important and triggered so many. It was the fact that no guys, you got to look. And, and I think that's, that's proof again, that the movement is still going strong. Women need to come forward as Camille eloquently said, any victim should still come forward. We shouldn't be afraid DV comes in no, you know, has no gender. Uh, and that to me is such a beautiful, it's, it's so inspiring and great to see finally people and women. We have, Greg, we have a huge, uh, our, most of our, our demographic here on this channel is mostly women. I think it's like a 60 to a 40% man. And uh, it, it's, it's incredible to me to see that the tides are finally turning. We have so many smart women on both, you know, from various political backgrounds. It's not even political at this point who just, you know, are like, look, uh, DV has no gender, right? How does that make you feel to finally, do, do you, do you you see the tide turning greg oh i absolutely how does it make me feel i get emotional thinking about it because you know it's a, it's an uphill battle to fight uh, a movement that, that that's message becomes so extreme and rigid um in the believe all women all men bad well no there are good men there are good women there are bad men there are bad women it's uh you know i, I think men like me are just so grateful uh, to Johnny for for setting an example of courage um, for everyone who is the victim of a false allegation, the silver bullet of the false allegation of domestic violence. And the battle is not over. I think many things have to change in our broken family law system. Where this case started uh, in May 2016, Samantha Spector and attorneys like her, the Judy Bogans, the, the Laura Wassers, the Susan Wiesners, uh, these attorneys, the thousand plus dollars an hour attorneys who make so much money, millions upon millions of dollars, by perpetrating the false narratives um, 
and pushing their clients towards making false accusations. We have to reform family law. We have to bring in the presumption of innocence. Look, and we have to remember there are children involved, even though Amber and Johnny didn't have kids together. Um, you know, he has kids. And, you know, we, we have a system now where 4,000 children a day are losing a parent in American family law courts. And 85% of the time, the child loses the father. So that's a quarter of a million children are placed into foster care every year. And none of these children deserve this. And every single one of these children that's placed into foster care is worth $6,000 to the state. The federal government reimburses them $6,000. So this generates $1.5 billion a year, literally, and I don't say this lightly, for selling kids into foster homes. So the incentives for the DV industry, and it is an industry, there are a few charities out there that are really doing good, but there are so many of these charities that get the funding, that get the charity support, that have the, the clever messaging, um, for example, you know, I'm having on my show tomorrow, if, if I may, Erin yes. Pizzi, who, yeah, she started the world's first domestic violence um, abuse shelter called Refuge 52 years ago. Erin Pizzi, she found that of the, fir the first 100 women who came into her shelter, 62 of those women were as violent or more violent than the men they left. She spoke out about it. Her cat was, was killed and poisoned. Uh, the bomb squad sent to her home. She was hounded out of England. Um, she can't even set foot in the charity that's still going, by the way, and a few days ago is posting on social media again about women and girls. It's like, no, we should just stop at peoples, all peoples. Um, we support all peoples who are domestic violence, abuse victims or casualties. So I think we have to really get our heads around this. I'm really excited that this has really opened up the conversation. Finally, I, I think I first posted the hashtag men too about four years ago, and it was great to see it trending. And uh, again, just very quickly, happy birthday to Johnny. <laughs> Happy birthday to Johnny. He's in England on stage, performing with Beck somewhere. I don't know, but he's looking bunny. Happy birthday to Johnny Depp. Just had to get that in there because it's his birthday. Yeah, dude. That was awesome. That was a... <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, yeah, beautiful. We're going to be singing a lot, and I'm so happy to hear you sing it. I want to make a proper plug for Greg. I just put the link in mods. I think they're sharing it. You can pick up his book, uh, The Respondent, uh, over at therespondent.com, audiobook, et cetera. Uh, really important. Case. A lot of interviews and things you've done, as well as your YouTube channel, Learn More. Is that where the interview will be? Is that where you're holding the stream? Yeah, the, it's going to be YouTube and okay. Twitter and, you know, the usual places, Facebook. And I just want to add as well the community, the respondent community that I just recently launched. So many people are coming into the community. It's a safe, sp safe space to have these conversations. Uh, I'm there every day. I post there nearly every day. And um, you can chat, you can get to meet people, similar like-minded people, but it's just a great area for people to come who've endured these issues or have family members who have, you know, the forgotten. We, we talk about the kids and the parents, but sometimes it's the grandparents, the extended family members who endure the, the, the separation from the children, the, the parental alienation, if you will. So um, there's some great conversations taking place there. That's what I would, uh, I would say if people want to hop over there and join the community. Yeah, please do. Go join it. Go support Greg. We do. And uh, I want to make sure you guys support. There's the YouTube link as well. Go hit, give him a subscribe. Uh, I, I, we're going to come back talk about it, but I, I have you here and we're talking Johnny. He won. You're a fellow Pirates co-star. Hmm. What do you think the odds are? Are are there enough alpacas in the world, you think, to change Johnny's mind if Disney was so, you know, was like, we made a mistake and I think they're starting to realize they did. Do you think there is any possibility in the world from your just point of view that we could see Captain Jack Sparrow come back? I think there's always a possibility. You know, he made up his mind, but minds can be changed. Um, so can the people who work at Disney, the people who make the decisions. Look, I, you know, there's no Catholic church without the Pope. And there is no, for me, Pirates of the Caribbean without Jack Sparrow. And there's only one Jack Sparrow, and that's Johnny Depp. Who else is going to step into that role? One could argue, well, look at other movies where, well, I think we have Fantastic Beast. But that is quintessentially the pirates, Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp. Uh, so could there be? Yes. I think it's going to be an interesting neg negotiation that Tracy Jacobs will be nowhere near. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I, I have a lot of people are like, no, Johnny said it's out. I don't know. I feel like if, if Disney were to properly 
do the right. I think that's what it takes. I mean, it's even for me, and I'm curious yeah. for you. Disney has to do some things to make to right the wrong, right? And I feel like if Disney were to right the wrong and cut the check, I, and maybe give them an alpaca farm <laughs> or something <laughs> that a, as a kind gesture, I, 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 fans could still have their hopes up. No. Of course, I think there's always hope. And I think, you know, cooler heads will prevail and a little distance and a little time. Um, you know, uh, Hollywood forgets and forgives pretty quickly. So I think, though, you know, I would I would hazard to say, look, franchises you, to get a franchise. When we made the first movie, we had no idea the movie, the last Pirates movie that was made before we, we got on the set of Pirates of the Caribbean and did the read through at the Viper Room before we started filming, actually, at nine o'clock in the morning, which is an interesting experience, where it was um, Cutthroat Island, which sank a studio. So mm -hmm. we didn't have we weren't you never know when you make a movie, you can have a great experience. It can be a terrible movie you can have a terrible experience make a great movie so happens on pirates of the caribbean it turned out to be a blockbuster and spawned two more which we did back to back two and three and then you make four and five well number six is really just the icing on the cake where you close the book on the entire chapter or trilogy or what's the word for six of them i don't know but the six of the movies and i think johnny depp playing jack sparrow i mean what a do you know what would be great, I think, Andy, is that entrance that he made in the first movie that Jack Sparrow makes when you see him heroically with the horizon on the mast and he steps off onto the deck. There's got to be a re-entrance to kind of, you know, bring back Ted, uh, Elliot and Terry Rossio, get them to write the script, tie up all the characters, give us a fun swashbuckling, you know, chivalric, uh, good bad guy of Jack Sparrow, bring back Jeffrey, you know, tie all the loose ends up. So I'm, I'm going to put my money on yes. It'll be a bit of time, um, but yes, he'll be back as Jack. I'm holding out hope. I think. I think. I, look, I, I'll be honest. I didn't. I didn't. I thought they they started getting a little sillier as they go. But I think we, you're right. If you have enough time and you take enough and respect it, you can really come back with a really stellar and and bring fans back and really close close the book or whatever. But at least respect it. And then if you want to do the the uh, what's her name uh, Margot Robbie version later, or whatever. I got no interest in that. But you, it, it, I I think it'd be a huge mistake of Margot to go do this without the approval of Johnny and or the fans. You know what I mean? I just think it's disrespectful. This is a franchise that was built on his back and I know they're going to try and they're trying. Hollywood does it all the time. Reboots and side things. And yes, they have the red pirate they could try to do. Come on. Anybody who signs up for that and doesn't get his approval, the fans are not going to accept it. It's going to be a mistake. And I think especially given all that Johnny's been through, right? It would be incredibly, I think, distasteful to be like, yeah, we're going to try and launch my own pirates. Talk about pressure. My God, to try and combat that. Uh, speaking of which, I'm so happy we got another special guest. The real Lara B is here. How are you doing, Lara? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Did you hear that? Newt? Greg just said he thinks we could maybe. There might. It might happen. What do you think? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I remember a lot of the text. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm good, uh, thanks, Laura. How are you? Good. I remember a lot of texts that we saw in the UK, sadly, but Johnny was talking about he had a disappointing experience in the last one. They weren't letting him have as much creative control as he had had in the past. Um, he wasn't able to write a lot of those jokes for his own character. Uh, I think that was seen in the movie, quite yeah. honestly, but that wasn't the Jack Sparrow we were used to seeing. He said, nobody wants to see a sad Jack. And uh, yeah, I would love for him to be able to do a, a, another one and close out his character his way. Do you know what I think part of that is, Laura and, 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 anyone, uh, and Andy, is, is, you know, the first movie, there was such a great uh, atmosphere. There was a creative spirit and teamwork and trust. You know, you have Ted and Terry writing the script, mm -hmm. Gore Verbinski directing the movie. And there is a respect there, you know, that there is an inclusion uh, in the creative process. And I think it's natural that you, you get to four, you, we have Rob Marshall on four, and then we get to five different directors. Everyone's moved on a little bit and it's, it's in Australia. So I would love to see, you know, Ted and Terry return. I'd love to see um, Gore Verbinski return. And I think the person to, and, and obviously Johnny is Jack, but I think the person to make that happen would, uh, would probably be Jerry. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. um, is, you know, he's an old uh, sage in Hollywood uh, and he can pull together. You know, if Dick Cook was still there at Disney, it had happened. The, the phone call would have already taken place and there would have been yeah. something unofficial about Johnny saying, yeah, we won't announce it yet, but I'll do it. You're in. Great. And, and they just started the creative process with the script. But, um, you know, I, th I think there's, a, there's definitely a will to get it done. Um, even if Johnny doesn't have the will right now, he will when they come to him. 
Because right. I, right. I, I could see it's like a pride thing. Like you said it. I understand why you said it. But what a what a sweet sweet turnaround to have them coming back and saying, "All right, let's do this." I just think it's sweet. It is sweet. You know. Uh, Justice it is to finally have it come back. And if Johnny does it, the fans are going to lose their mind. And I think you're It'd right. It'd be if you bad business not to as well, right? I mean, yeah. they, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> they want to make box office bank. Yeah. Yeah, because even though I, as they got, you know, not maybe as popular, they still made bank and people still love it. So it's like you can't, to, to try and take him out, he, he was the ingredient. I mean, I remember him even saying it like, Disney was terrified, right, of that performance. It just felt like you guys were out there risk taking risks. You know, as you said, Cutthroat Island, if you guys don't, aren't familiar, that was the big pirate movie prior with Gina Davis, biggest bomb like in Hollywood, and everyone was so yeah. afraid to make pirates movies. And then here, Gore Verbinski, I think, doesn't get nearly enough credit as a director. What I a agree. visionary, a mouse hunt. My God, the dude's made so many amazing films. And uh, he really, him and Johnny and Jerry, the whole team, the screeners, you guys all really just did took a risk and, cre and created that feeling of a movie that we hadn't seen in a long time but i really think it was on the back of johnny who really took the biggest risk to give us that looney tunes character he was sort of yeah. really taking a shot with that was family friendly but invest you know we were engrossed with him and that's what he does yeah. and that was clearly the game changer i think that made that franchiser franchise a franchise do, do you agree greg I absolutely agree. And I, you know, it takes me back to the, you know, when we first started filming the first movie, before yeah. we actually started filming, he, um, you know, I remember he, the, the studio were really, really nervous about it. You know, I think there were internal discussions about, you know, we have an effeminate drunk uh, pirate <laughs> as our lead character. And it, and I think it was close to, you know, this isn't going to work, similar to Al Pacino in uh, Godfather with, um, with uh, Coppola going to bat for him. And then the studio saw the the dailies and, and were just blown away and we'll, we'll keep him. And I think that's that that's what happened with Pirates. And also I'm reminded as well of the brilliant genius of his mind and how he works and how he understands Hollywood. Um, before we filmed the first movie, he had the costume fitting and he put on 25 rings instead of 10 rings. He put on, you know, twice the amount of um, wig and hair and three times the amount of makeup. And he walked in uh, to the execs and they were kind of shocked and were like, well, can we lose some of the rings? He went, sure. Can we lose some of the hair? Sure. Uh, maybe we can lose some of the makeup? Sure. And basically he gave them the agency to think that they'd made the decision uh, to, to, <laughs> yeah. to, to peel back to exactly the character that he saw anyway so we were smart enough to do that um and to see that performance and to be around that performance you know as it's going on film uh is is something else i mean he would just walk on set as jack sparrow um and it's it's fun you get to you actually literally get to meet jack sparrow in in period costume um you know and if you're method and you're back in the time you know my character in particular i had this ongoing theme throughout the movies where I, I there was part of me that just longed to be a pirate and be free and jack sparrow was my kind of i, I think there was a deep-seated unrequited love that i had for jack sparrow <laughs> what well, who was method actually i'm fascinated by that because for those that don't know method it's like the daniel day lewis where you show up to set and your character throughout it all he was lincoln apparently they couldn't even have cell phones around him on his in his cabin and stuff like he's the most notorious uh method actor but were you were there were, was there like met, attempted method acting during no. that was johnny did johnny resort to that no i, I wouldn't say johnny was necessarily method he, it was because he would when he, he was in his trailer when it came time to go and uh, to be on set he would be jack sparrow when he left the trailer so to that degree maybe um jeffrey rush i remember you know jeffrey rush i wouldn't necessarily call method but jeffrey would i called him freddie fingers because uh, he's always so, you know, everything's, and he trained with Marcel, uh, Marcel in France with mine. So Jeffrey, had, you know, we'd be, we'd be doing a scene and there'd be um, background, background actor, actors, and one was kind of just bringing, in, bringing him in and throwing him on the ground or me on the ground. And he'd go over and he'd be like, so hello, I'm Jeffrey, nice to meet you. So listen, maybe you've had an argument with, you, with your wife this morning and you get on the thing and you, that's underlying your character. So when you throw me down, you're really taking it out on your wife. And so Jeffrey would just, <laughs> he had an enthusiasm to film. Every time we did, we got back together to make another movie. Jeffrey he would have a screening in his hotel room. He'd invite the cast over and be like, he'd get everyone into the pirate spirit again. He was like a little kid at a carnival. Um, so maybe not necessarily method, but um, that was, uh, and I won't tell my Penelope Cruz story because 
Oh, oh you can't that. tease that. It, it, it was oh, a- come on. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, kind of mildly, it's mildly embarrassing. Well, it's more than mildly embarrassing for me. Maybe I should. I haven't told it publicly before. Um, okay, I'm going to take a exclusive? risk. Please. Oh, we got exclusive. exclusive. Here it is. <laughs> Please don't judge me on this. <laughs> so we're, we're, we get to Hawaii to um, to rehearse and do the script read through for Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Rob Marshall flies in all of, you know, the memorabilia and some of the sets. And it's amazing. It's like a shrine to pirates. You know, you could walk around like a Disney uh, tour. And then we sit down and we do the read through. And Johnny was filming something else at the time. So Rob Marshall asked me to read through uh, as Jack Sp- read as Jack Sparrow for the read through. So I, we do the read through and Rob says, oh, Johnny's not, not going to be in town for a few days. We have to do this scene where him and Penelope's characters kind of first meet and they're swinging on ropes on the deck and he's straddling the cannon and pulling out a bottle of wine from between his legs. And will you do, will you rehearse as Jack Sparrow with Penelope Cruz for the next wow. few days? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. So we get to, we get to, I can't believe I'm telling this. We get to rehearse. Oh, happy birthday. Can we just sing happy birthday? So we, we get to the, we get like Penelope and I, we meet. Uh, we're um, rehearsing the scene. Well, there's choreography, there's dance, there's swinging on ropes. It ends with us on the floor with her on top of me. And then I roll over on top of her. And then she rolls on top of me. And then it's supposed to end with uh, a, a, a going in for a kiss. So I'm on top of her. She rolls me over. She's on top of me. And then something happens in my trousers that is perfectly natural when a beautiful That's woman right. is, right? <laughs> and um, But I'm mortified because <laughs> she can't. There's no way I can hide it because she's lying on top of me. And I just look up at her and go, I'm so sorry to Penelope Cruz and she leans in and just whispers in my ear in that sexy Spanish voice it's okay it's not the first time this happened whoa I was like whoa cut to a few days later Javier comes on set and I think he just been uh, he just done uh, there will be blood and I'm thinking has she told him am I in trouble will I be uh, alive? so um but yeah husband, so right? there's my married at that point Javier there uh yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, she well, was pregnant. It's okay. I it's didn't even realize. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. As we went further into that movie, month after month, I think she ended up with maybe seven or eight or nine doubles. At some point, at one point, they got a sister to fly in because we were running out of doubles. <laughs> uh, back double, face double, hand double, uh, stunt double, water double. It was it was nuts. She's such. She's so amazing. I'm sure she was she also delightful to work with. What an wow. amazing actress in her own right, but gorgeous and yeah, that, that, hilarious. Like it's okay. It's, it's not the first time. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> great story. Oh my it's goodness. It's a real story. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, I, I appreciate that she kept it real with you. That's a nice one. I was I, you, you Jeffrey Rush. I did, was going to go back in his comment too. What another pro and another example of a guy who won a lawsuit against defamation over there in Australia, yeah. where he was able to fight for that uh, as well. So a lot of people sort of moved on and ignored the fact but he won a lot of money and won that case when they tried to come after him as well uh, unfairly uh so another uh, hero on this sort of cause of fighting for justice and uh the media trying to, to to screw with us but man what what i was just a kid there we'll listen to all those fun stories from set thank you for sharing that and guys in order, but he shared that. Let's help him out. Go get some. Go hit the subscribe button. I can't believe I haven't That's there. Right. I, I was embarrassed. I was like, oh my god, I do it. I'm publicly subscribed. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Go to the respondent, and also you can go to his link tree. You can order the book. You can catch his other podcasts. You can find them all over Instagram, social, etc. Uh, so go uh, scroll through and go support Greg for those amazing stories and shares. Well, Laura, go ahead. You were going to say something. Oh, I I was going to say one of the things I loved about the Pirates franchise was we attended all the movies pretty close to three generations and then having dinner afterwards and being able to talk about it you know there's mm-hmm. not a lot of movies out there to do that and, yeah. uh, it, and we're it was now just a big thing every time we knew one was coming out per- a perfect opportunity to do the next one i mean i think they got to wait a little bit I, I understand that but if they really i know they were i think they're, they're rumored they said in the lawsuit they're the trial rather they're working on a couple versions but i can't jerry seems like a smart guy as you said i can't imagine he's not already noodling how do we make this work but disney's also you know they're very frustrating in itself but 
He's innocent. He's the shirt is the truth. The jury has now de deemed it factual at this point. I don't know what else they need to move forward and say, okay, they kept him in the theme parks. I mean, that's really what Johnny was mad about, I think. And, and rightfully, like you're going to not keep me in these franchises, but you're going to still monetize the likeness of the character I've made and all the figures right. and everything else. There's a Jack Sparrow uh, mirror verse figure that's in target right now. Uh, they're still monetizing it and they've made, I can't even know. How much money do you think they've made, uh, Greg, off of Jack Sparrow on Disney? <laughs> Tons of money. You know, I, I I was the voice of the Jack Sparrow doll when the first movie came out. I've, I've done a lot of the ADR for Johnny when he hasn't been about. I, it's, a, it's a great deal of money that has been yeah. made. And I think money speaks in Hollywood. And eventually, cool heads will prevail. They'll come together and um, and it will. I can see it happening. I can definitely see it happening. It'd be good for Disney for sure, because I think I see a lot of you saying screw Disney. But if Johnny can make amends, I got no problem. Then that's it's all about Johnny's decision, uh, and it, I think it would be a good look for Johnny too to know that he's back in a big Disney temple. But yeah, I I, I still think Hollywood's nervous, and that's what's so frustrating. But uh, this is a good step towards the right direction. Um, yeah, I, I I'm still marveling by uh, the the fact we 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 got to all fight against this because this is the positive story, but. They're still out there trying to spin this into what's a step backwards. And no, we refuse. We will keep announcing it every time they try to come out to spin this narrative. This is not a step backwards. And, and we know that from all the amazing brave callers, victims, survivors, or, uh, warriors, as we call exactly. it here, who have stepped forward to be like, no, you don't speak for me. This is not a step backwards. You were a step backwards. Uh, you ruined a lot of things. You made this a problem, Amber. Uh, and I loved it. Greg and Laura, you're, uh, I want to get your thoughts. Did you watch the interviews with Camille and uh, Ben? I thought they were, it's how nice to see some well-spoken lawyers. They were so classy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would just, I would just say very quickly on the, on the, on the, uh, the press, you know, and the setback, you know, I think she said she was heartbroken, Amber Heard, and called a, she did call the verdict a setback for women everywhere, saying in her press statement that it sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. And then her attorney goes, uh, I think it was Elaine, appeared on national television, which I thought was, you know, she went the day after bemoaning the verdict, saying that it shouldn't have happened. And I forget the name of the player, the NFL player who pushed back yeah. Uh, yeah. and said, yeah. you know, when when we when, when we're on a team and we don't do well, we don't bemoan the verdict. We all get together and we we say, you know, we look in the mirror of self. Yeah. And um, yeah. so I think, you know, and, and seeing Ben and Camille on, on television, look, I've said this before, Ben, I spoke to a couple of months before the trial started about potentially appearing as a witness. And uh, you just sense with the man uh, that he has integrity, he has such a big, warm teddy bear heart. He's smart. He's almost like, you know, directing the traffic, if you will, within the law firm and uh, really astute of them to, to promote her. Congratulations to her. She deserved it. Um, I said her, not heard to her, meaning Camille. Um, and and uh, because, you know, someone would have snagged uh, Camille Vasquez up if they hadn't yeah. promoted her. Um, I just think all around it's uh, it's a win, win, win for for everyone. So as much as as much as there'll be these, as I call them, uh, the um, e evangelical feminists who don't leave any room for doubt, who can't see case by case. No one's suggesting, uh, you know, I'm sick of this trope that's, you know, you say anything positive about Johnny or negative about Amber in this case, you are misogynist, misogynist, right. misogynist. It's like me, you know, if we've got a broken record and say misandrist, misandrist, it's not going to help. Demonizing masculinity is not the solution. It's the problem. It's always been the problem. Men are you know, like women, flawed at times. And we're all trying to get along here. So case by case basis, innocent till proven guilty. Happy birthday, Johnny Depp. Yeah. Well, well he nailed it. Well, pe people forget that she made money off of these claims. I mean, she was with the Harry Walker agency as a speaker. It was advertised or reported in the Daily Mail that she was getting paid upwards to 35000 or more for each speech that she was giving. So, you know, the, they, by the way, she's off the site now. I went back and double checked it. She's no longer on the speaking site. Oh, good. So the, other one, the other one, Laura, that got my attention was, um, was it Lisa Bloom? Um, yeah. Who supports Amber? She proclaimed, you know, in her, in her I think in her bio, uh, that she fights for everyday people who are victims of discrimination, harassment, and abuse. Well, if she's such a staunch advocate for victims, one has to wonder why she represented Harvey Weinstein. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's the same with Roberta Kaplan and Cuomo. Yep. And it's the same with, with so many of, well, particularly in family law, when you look into the Judy Bogans, you look into the Laura Wasses, you look into the Samantha Spectres, the Susan Wiesners, these attorneys get rich by perpetrating the victimhood narrative. They are not interested in representing people because they are true victims, because most people can't afford $1,200 an hour and retainers that that require $40,000, $50,000 down. They're interested in winning using the go-to silver bullet playbook of the false allegation of domestic violence. And every day this goes on in America and in the UK and in Western civilization, but I live in America, every day it goes on. And today lives are being ruined. Children are being ripped from their fathers and parents and good families and good homes just because attorneys want to get rich. Mm. It's true. It's true. And then they use that, Greg, to say, oh, we'll see. That's why women can't ever get the. Ca- oh, that's it's 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 like a never ending. They always figure out some way to make the excuse. But the, but you're so right. It goes both ways. And there's so much corruption happening right now and so much cover up and spin to try to keep the narrative going. Uh, and I'm so grateful, as you said it earlier, I'm so grateful that Johnny had the resources and the strength to really fight this because we don't have yeah. a lot of examples of this. Uh, I mean, do you, he, he must know, I mean, he did, he, I was, I, I was going to go there actually when his statement, like he clearly knows the, the gravity of what happened here beyond even just oh, yeah. him. Right. I mean, do you think he, he'll become a, a advocate in ways of, of other cases? Do you think he'll just sort of not bring that up? What do you guys think of uh, sort of the future of this movement? I think he, w- I, he checks in. I mean, just I. Uh, there are a couple of accounts that he will that he signs into and checks in, and he'll check online and see what's going on, uh, anonymously, Ooh. if you will. Um, it, it, he has f- a finsta, is what you're saying. Yeah, we all we all have those. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. You see, I'm just an old fogey. I don't know. The lurker um, account. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. I think what it's done is it's it's well, two things. It's it's allowed us to have the conversation that abuse has no gender. It's encouraged men uh, to speak up and out about um, suffering through uh, physical, emotional, psychological violence. Um, It's given uh, I mean, it's also put put it's paid like dead in the water, this, this notion that the Me Too movement is the be-all, catch-all, end-all. You know, I've said this before, maybe it's time's up for Me Too monologue and, um, you know, it's time for the Men Too dialogue. And what's interesting is the crickets from the leading advocates of Me Too have been very deafening. You know, Gabrielle Union, Sophia Bush, Mira Savino, um, Alyssa Milano, Tarana Berg, we heard a little bit about on the, I think she did a time uh, interview the other day, but um, frankly, I wasn't impressed with what she had to say. And then there was Jodi Cantor. Oh, good. I just want to quickly mention her. She helped spark the Me Too movement. She went on CBS morning show the day after the verdict. And she's so, to your point, Andy, so ideologically fixed and certain in her belief that all men are bad, that even after Amber Heard had been found to be a liar, that she continued the extremely ridiculous notion that Amber Heard is a victim and that who's to blame? Misogyny. It's it's like it's people are just sick and tired of it now. And it's not we're sick and tired of it. We want to vilify because you want to castigate people and, and, and cancel them and push them out. But the Dr. Charlotte Proudman's of the world, the, the Dr. Emma Katz of the world, the jo- Joan Myers, these people who've been really pushing this deeply dark feminist agenda within family law and the legislation and the research papers, it's important that they get weeded out and called out and exposed so that now we can actually have a conversation, include people in the conversation that actually are doing good, the local heroes, the people who don't have a platform, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I plug yeah. in the book again and I hope we we've been teasing it but I'm going to I'm going to keep you to it at some point I want to do a conversation with Greg talking about the past the respondent and getting into his story so stay tuned and make sure you subscribe over there over here you can learn just by reading his book or purchasing his book 
uh, as well as his link tree with the mods are sharing. Go subscribe and go get the word out there. Uh, but I love to hear what you're doing over there, uh, fighting against the corruption and the family courts. I, I, yeah, it's 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 tough for dads in those situations. And and let's be clear, there's some bad dads. There are some bad dads who don't want to be there. But for the dads who who are good dads who want to be there, it's really unfortunate the stories I've heard from people coming forward and and so on. So um, uh, thank you for doing all that work and putting it out there. And you guys can go support it and learn more about it over there at the respondent dot com uh a pleasure to have you and also i just wanted to make sure i said hello to lewis Lecco also just joined us in Hi, we're gonna have lots of pop-ins throughout hey, this show what's pop up, in panel? and outs as we celebrate the man the myth the legend uh mr johnny depp who is uh what is it sorry it's he's 59, 59. good does it uh, yeah wow good for him man uh and I love all the uh, memes and birthday people are found like old, his old birthday. Sh what is he holding? It looks like he's on an iPad. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's a, it's a book. It's a book. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, what is, what is that from the future? Uh, but there we have a lot of uh, okay. older sh shots of him celebrating his birthday through the slideshow, some fan shots, but we are celebrating and talking about not just him as his birthday, but what this means and what he's able to accomplish for, for so many. Um, and so to celebrate, so nice to see him there with the mega pint. Uh, Lewis, welcome. Uh, good to see you, Kim. As uh, Lewis and Kim and, and Laura and Greg are all here. Yeah. Uh, well, I know, Greg, you have a little bit. Of, so that's why I was leaning on Greg and getting his inf information uh, first, guys. But anything else you wanted to add while you're here or, or to say about Johnny? Any story to share or anything else to the audience should know about what this means, uh, that this verdict for you and for him? Are you asking me, Andy? Yeah, yeah, you, Greg. I think I think the positives of this win is, is for all victims. I mentioned it on social media. I think that he's... He has taken this battle uh, to the only place that he could f have a voice. He's spoken. He's spoken truth. You never fear the truth. Um, the legal system in this case worked. And it's a win for all victims of false allegations. Um, and Amber Heard has now been proven in a court of law, as well as likely the court of public opinion, that she maliciously defamed Johnny Depp's <laughs> reputation. She lied. The jury didn't believe her lies. And he now has his reputation back. I am so emotionally overwhelmed when I think about what he's been through, because I've been through something similar, slightly different. And all of the men and all of the women who are sisters and mothers and aunts and grandmothers and wives and girlfriends of the men who've endured a similar situation. So, you know, the battle is not over um, in terms of the the war, the bigger, the the family law war that I've I've engaged in with my book and the people that have been coming after me. Um, but I'm I'm really I'm really excited about winning these multiple battles. And this was such a watershed battle for him to win and for the jury and for the legal team. It's just a win, 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 win. So hopefully in time, the zero sum game of family law can be uh, can be undone and we can bring some relief to those shipwrecked families out there. The other narrative, I, and you maybe you can help attest and clear it up too, but it's like I, I, he tried to stop this. Like what, what's so amazing about this whole story is he gave her so many opportunities and outs to not have a go here. We heard it on audio. We saw it in a divorce settlement. He, he gave, he was like, look, I don't want to do this. Let's not do this. We heard her pleading. Yeah. He was pleading to her. We don't need to go here. And so it's frustrating now to just try to have people who don't know the story. Right, Laura, you know this too. Yeah. People who don't oh, know yeah. the story to be out there like, he was using the court system and drag her through the... No, it was the, he literally had previously tried how many times, Laura, to get her to, so, to sign NDA sort of settlements, to gave her the money, did so many Give, attempts yeah. to try to not make this go public, and she couldn't help herself. It's a really frustrating narrative, and as we celebrate Johnny and get the truth out there, it's just important we always remind people, reiterate, he didn't want this trial. Who would want this trial? Who would want to expose themselves as intimately as he had to? Yeah. It, it, he had to do it. There was He knew Amber was never, and Amber's proving she's still never going to accept it. No. She's never going to she accept it. She initiated the divorce proceedings. She became the petitioner. She did it with a false accusation. The, the negotiations took place. There was a settlement. Many settlement offers made. Made. The papers were signed. She should have taken her money, given the seven yeah. million dollars that wasn't her money that she was being given to give to charity to charity. Come out of it smiling and kept a plutonic relationship with him. Got on with her career. She had a privileged life. She had everything more than yeah. most little girls could ever dream of. Yep. And she blew it. 
Yep. And then, right, then there were still moments where they, she was trying to still, like, let's just recant this, let's do it. She could not accept it. She dug herself in a yeah. hole, and it's just, it's... I, I, I want to have empathy, but I just can't. It's so hard knowing how how big a hole, right? And Laura, you know what I have empathy for Andy, the little girl, little girl Amber, the little girl version of her that's that that went through the trauma that she obviously endured with her family dysfunctional family environment. But you know what? When you become an adult, you look in the mirror, you do the recovery work, and that was the difference between the two that was evident in testimony on the stand. Yeah. Johnny is in recovery, uh, like many of us in the entertainment business. We are consistently working on many people in life. We're consistently working on our behavior patterns and how we can improve them. And, and she had a rock bottom moment. And they talk about that in fellowship groups and uh, AA and, you know, you hit rock bottom. Well, she hasn't learned for it. She hasn't hit rock bottom yet. And that was the difference between the two. He would own up. How many times did she answer a question on the stand, yes or no? I can't remember once. Yeah. And that to me is indicative of someone who doesn't want to own anything. And I always say, no one is to blame. No one is at fault. It's everyone's responsibility. And Johnny accepted responsibility for parts of his behavior that of course he didn't want public and but of course were slightly embarrassing and humiliating, but he owned it. She didn't own and still isn't owning anything and she may not soon when she's bankrupt and has to pay a point whatever million dollars oh that was a bit cruel yeah, yeah. even the media is trying to like give her an out saying oh well if you uh, maybe in your appeal you can agree to just uh she won't appeal if you don't take the money they were pressing ben on that i think it was george stephanopoulos was trying to like yeah. get this narrative out there and ben's wasn't having it he's like yeah i'm not talking about any of this you <laughs> what are you t trying to do here but it's just Except weird instruction where do you think that came from laura do you think that is an actual well, george would yeah george wouldn't have asked a female survivor that question would they no. exactly no no no. no. So, no, she was never going to drop it. We saw that with Carino's testimony that she had been multiple times trying to get in touch with Johnny to get messages to Johnny to call him for his birthday one year. I mean, I think that was 2019. She was still trying to somehow connect to him. Um, the one time he decided to speak up from the GQ UK article where he said, that's not who I am. That's I'm not that person, you know, et cetera. She sued him via arbitration and for violating the confidentiality agreement and she was denied and that was just in october of 2018 and then in december she wrote the op-ed and it, people keep saying he's still abusing her by dragging her through the courts no that's what she was doing yep. he finally just had to say stop it has to stop right and she as camille eloquent she never thought it was going to go the way it did. She never thought the world was going to turn on her. And the she thought yeah. she had that shield as that to quote Adam, right? The sword, the, they had the sword and the shield to defend. Oh, you're going to believe me. I'm the woman there. And she said it to him. And so to see that it didn't go her way is just a, I think that's why so many of us were so emotional and so happy to see that it finally, the tables turned and, and, and in one instance, because it doesn't usually ever happen as someone Greg, I don't even know if you know my background, but uh, same thing. Like no one p posts the retractions. No one cares nope. when yeah. when you're when you're just when it, when the proof comes out and it's like oh that woman was they all just go oh <laughs> they all just turn away and walk away and don't want to have the egg on their face it's it's a disgusting trend uh, and, and the media doesn't ever want to correct themselves oh my god I, I, we've we were talking about the other day the Washington Post like how sickening is the Washington Post right now I've had I'm trying to get this author on Taylor. Uh, I don't think she's going to die. She's waiting Taylor, for permission. Are you talking Taylor Lorenz? Yeah, I've been, yeah. Ta oh, Andy I've been talking oh, no, to her. Please, well, no Greg, well, Greg, I trust me. I, I want to I want to try to talk to her one on one. Listen Why? to Greg. That, that I mean, would, if you need to, I would love I, to I have a conversation. Too many people. I know too many people whose lives have been ruined by by I'm going to use the word alleged to cover my bases untruths that have been put out there the power of the press and the media but i'd be interested to well good luck getting her on because she's she's hopped from the gray lady crumbling of the new york times to the washington post um she's got a history of that one she died and I, I wish she we were speaking she's like yes I, I will talk but i need to get permission from the pub I'm, I'm so i'm waiting i'm being polite but you know i'm frustrated because she did a whole knockdown on like internet journalists she put out umbrella guys sa alleged yep. salary and all these things and then sort of lied about it and now it's covering saying well i didn't my editor did it by accident i corrected it 
I'd love to sort yeah. it out, Taylor. I would love to have that because, and as Christopher Melcher, our attorney on the show, said, wouldn't it be nice to hear how much money the Washington Post made on the op-ed itself? Right. <laughs> how right. much How much was that monetized? There are ads on it. You have to buy to get subscription. It'd be interesting if we could do an yeah. audit on how much the Washington Post made on the whole thing and then still won't correct. Uh, and then follow up with the ACLU and find out how much money they still get mm -hmm. in, uh, in funding every year. That once great organization, because they were such a needed great organization. Mm -hmm. Look at them now. I mean, good grief. What a public relations disaster they are. Civil yeah. liberties that they just trounced on didn't give it's a crap about a the due process in this case and just really and and I, and I loved how the guy on the stand from the SAU was caught twice saying an ad uh, for what what the whole piece was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an ad. like hello, caught, gotcha. Uh, do you think? So you've seen, go ahead, Laura. You've you've seen it's been updated with the uh, that the editors note at the top saying that these uh, statements in here have been found. Well, I hated that they added, um, but Johnny also was found defamatory in one statement, which had nothing to do with that op-ed. It shouldn't even be added. And I had such mixed feelings whether they should just take the article down. But I think it's good they left it up because people are curious. And if they go look at it, it's right in their face that she lied. So yeah. let, you know, people are going to Google the article. Yeah, we good, shouldn't rewrite saying, the history. I, I don't, I am, I don't disagree. I, that's not about removing the article to me, but it is like a correction. Like, and, and the way they went about it was as little as they could do. They didn't want to do any extra or take any accountability on it. But you'd think you'd put a pretty clear editor's note up top. This was proven to be defamatory. Yeah. And uh, in a court of law, Amber was found this. Uh, and we keep we will keep this up for historical purposes. But, be you know, a jury did it. But that's that's how it's supposed to be. Amber, I, and I would have accepted Amber Heard is a planning to appeal. Like, okay, just be truthful about it, right? But no, I agree with you, Laura. I was like, why are you bringing up the Adam Waldman statement that had nothing to do right. with the article? Nothing it's the all it's all them trying to avoid the egg on their face. Do you, uh, and to Greg and Laura, uh, Kim and Lewis, I've heard you. Sorry, I'll get to you in a minute. But um, do you guys think Johnny should like go after the ACLU is that because I, I understand he wants to move on he should right we should move on yeah. but the ACLU doing that is such a big injustice like should there be a bigger I you know microscope into what happened there and trying to get accountability in that I think based on everything we saw the defamation is the, the perfect defense is truth they believed her I don't think there was anything in those emails that suggested ACL knew she was lying so they followed through presuming she was being truthful. So I don't, so how he could go after them. They did embellish I mean, a little bit though, Laura, for, frankly, when they sent the email, I forgot the, I forget the exact yeah. verbiage they used, but when they were trying to, you know, schlock the story around and, and get it sold and get some momentum for themselves and for her in the op-ed. So do you want to be involved in the, uh, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp story, him beating up his, what, what, I forget the wording that was used. Yeah, but, but you're like, right. It was so it, crass of them to do yeah. that. It was like, they you're not a public relations firm for battered yeah. women, uh, celebrities, you know, like rise above it, you know. But, they were absolutely capitalizing on Johnny's name. And, and, was, and it's like, to me, what's so egregious is like, they're supposed to be the civil American Civil Liberties Union of, right? Everyone gets their, their day in court. Are you not going to talk to Johnny like and see the other side of this story you're going to use this and exploit it for memberships and, and donations uh yeah yeah but you're Laura you're right we've talked to Christopher Melcher and other lawyers are like well yeah it has to be with malice right did they know they right. were just believing Amber maybe that's why but and maybe Johnny would if he had a maybe that's what it makes a little muddier does he does I'm sure does not want to get into a long lawsuit again who would want to mm. but the ACLU to me it needs to be allowed called out more loudly because they still the fact that they're trying to get Johnny to now pay for the services. It's like, come on, just take just take the hit, guys. <laughs> Don't yeah, keep and, you, and, and the then press. you hear from legal scholars and, they, and lawyers and they say to you, well, you know, that's just par for the course. Well, you know what? The ACLU's behavior isn't and shouldn't be par for the course. So I get it. And mm -hmm. I'd be interested to find out from you, Andy, or maybe Christopher or, you know, a legal scholar or an attorney, you know, what the process is in terms of uh, if anyone's going to appeal. Because as I understand it, um, there's there's post-trial motions that the judge will, will that, that they ask the judge to throw the verdicts out. Um, right. You're talking about Amber appealing 
Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he could appeal Before too. That. He could oh, appeal. He can, to... Yes, he can also appeal. But yeah, yeah. The, he, and, you from know, I've heard, Amber can't afford to appeal because you have to put the money in before you can even do the appeal. That's right. That's yeah. one but, thing. Well, maybe she shouldn't have. She shouldn't have got a twenty-two thousand dollar a week uh, eight-bedroom mansion in Virginia while she was. Um, we know, didn't getting... actually. Thank you for it because I frankly. Keep... For that, the yes, guys, for those that don't know, Greg just dropped it. I was, I keep meaning to bring it up. Yeah, she's 22000 a month, right? A rental for a house yeah. in Virginia for someone who has no money. Uh, why? I mean, what? I get it. You don't want to be in a small one bedroom apartment. I get it. But, you know, you can get an Airbnb for a few hundred. Do you know I know. Like, an Airbnb for 5000 Like, let's go. Like, exactly. Like, my God, 220. That's insanity. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can understand maybe later, like, more amped up security or something, given everything that was happening. Okay. But a mansion, you don't need a mansion, uh, but she, she does. And she's not uh, good luck affording those mansions for, for a period of time. But it gets the other thing. Elaine lied, lied, Elaine and Amber both lied in that she also didn't pay for her attorneys. They were telling the jury, well, we need to get the appeal here because we need to pay for our, our attorney's fees. And she didn't pay for those attorney's fees. The insurance company paid for those insurance fees, which we found out later. Um, through and her if defamation, what we're saying is she, right. That CEO or whatever executive she is was with her every day at court. Arrived with her in the car, arrived from the back door of the of the courthouse with her and sat down every single day. I mean, I don't know who brings their insurance agent with them to places like anywhere. Well, was they she probably there day insist one? to go. Andy, I'm cu- I'm curious, or maybe you know, Laura. Uh, if we heard anything from um, Benjamin, I'm going to try and deliver it. How Johnny did on the sandwich from rotten. Born. Oh, right, born. Um, just the pause was so brilliant. Pause. He said everything yeah. without saying it. But he would be the one I think that re- would be really interesting to hear from because I get the sense that he was not best pleased with the client. No, but, or or but Elaine. You, I, well, I feel like him and Elaine, but I got I I hey, I'll do the um, unpopular thing. I will give Rottenborn credit because I think he did the job, and now he's checked out. He's like, I do okay, too. I did it, Le- guys. I, sorry, I had to do it. What do you? Don't be mad at me. I'm doing what I got to do, and he's not going to do the press tour. He's, he he clearly wasn't going the extra that now Elaine seems to be going. Which I honestly, I I was rooting for the Elaine redemption tour because I would have <laughs> forgiven both of those lawyers had they actually just said, "Look, we were doing our job. She lost." But don't you think is Benjamin is. is the smarter lawyer for doing what he's because he realizes if he went on a press tour, he would just get vilified because the weight of public opinion is and, and Elaine doesn't have that sense of self-awareness to be able to and goes on tv not only goes on tv but says you know this should never have happened uh, i mean who does who does what attorney does that unless they're seeking their uh 15 minutes of fame which i think she said that <laughs> one of the witnesses well, th- yeah think about the that, timeline okay i was gonna say it's was an, gonna say- an, an, sorry it's okay no, Kim, go, go, go. No. Floor is yours. I was just going to say she's the type of lawyer that'll spend 45 minutes to an hour going on about muffins when she's on a limited time frame. <laughs> that's the problem. I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm, that's the thing. Like, with Rottenborn, like, I, I, I agree with Andy. He defended his client. You can hate what he did, but he defended his client. And he, he was at least, he didn't make a complete fool of himself like multiple of the other lawyers on Amber's team did between objecting to themselves or amica cream or whatever else. Um, so, I mean, I, yeah, I'm I trying think he was here. A, I think Rottenborn was a very competent attorney. I think he yes. did it. Yeah, I think he did a really good job given what he had. I just don't think he was relatable or likable. I think it's easy to no. push, push, push and be that that attorney, but you need the kind of light to that. And Elaine Bredehoff is certainly not the relief to well, Rotten I think, push, push. look, let's let's call it what it is. I think it was very smart to have Camille do the opposing on Amber, right? Having a woman go against the woman was really smart on their side. And I'm sure that was a choice they all made on purpose. Let's not deny that. And it, it just it made it more effective. And I think it would have been better. I don't know. I think it would have been more effective for a lane or a woman to have gone against Johnny, if I'm being honest, right? Because then it, he would it would have been had to if Johnny had lost it or gotten aggressive with the woman, Right, it would have gone against what the narrative they were trying to spin, and so I think when they yeah. put up Rottenborn, Johnny was it was an easy win for for Johnny to take this guy down because we weren't we didn't like him. He could be sarcastic, he could do whatever he wanted, and again, I just another yeah. point to the legal that Amber's legal team that they just didn't they didn't have the right players, they didn't know how to do it, they weren't prepared, and I don't even want to keep knocking on them. I mean, who would want to represent Amber? It was a losing battle from day one. Everybody deserves counsel, though, and I, I I can't be mad at them for doing it. That's why I can't be mad at Rottenborn. 
And I was giving Elaine a shot. But when Elaine showed up the next day on the Today Show, all, all redemption was gone. I was like, all right, you've you made your bed. There's no turning back now. Yeah. Good luck. Because why why are you still defending her? I, did she get paid more? Is she trying to get paid? Maybe she thought she did such a poor job. Let me just own crazy uh, defendants who are going to need counsel. And no one else wants to defend them. Maybe that's <laughs> the angle she's going for. You know, Andy, when, when cameras are around and you get a microphone shoved in your face and you're the center of attention and you haven't been um for quite a while uh and it's celebrity it can be infectious and i think she was caught by that i think she saw yeah. her opportunity to try and spin it yeah uh she was a little bit stung by the defeat and um but i also think that she saw the opportunity to be you know a new wave gloria Allred or someone like that and and it and it just it was never gonna work Bless her cotton socks. She just needs to go and back. She, and I, I'll go to you, Laura, next, and I, I'm coming to you, Lewis. It was also interesting because she backed out of the Chanley interview on uh, Court TV. Yeah. Sudden legal issues. You, uh, to me, it was very clear that she was getting nervous. She was getting nervous, and she the, the, the appearances weren't helping matters. Go ahead, Laura, and then we're going to go around. I got to run. Interviews. Yeah, I got to run. I was just going to say quickly, I think she was in the panic to do some reputation damage control. Think about when she left that courtroom at what? 4.30, I think we saw them driving away. She was in New York City on set by 6.30 in the morning. I mean, she was so panicked to get there before Johnny's team could speak out. So that's what I saw. So uh, a little bit of desperation there. But I'm going to run. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate it always. My own stream. Hi, oh, yeah, you got your own stream, Laura. I, I'm sorry. I wish I could clone myself. But if I get done, I will Next send time. them over to you. Uh, Laura, check out the real Laura B on Twitter. Love you, Laura. Thanks so much for everything. Thanks. And I'm Bye -bye. probably going to have to split, Andy, because I have, I have uh, my own stream that I'm going to swim in. Oh, um, so hold on. Oh, nice no, I'm just kidding. As we <laughs> Lord, got, nice <laughs> as we got uh, wait, wait, one more guest. Let me give you a proper exit then as well. Laura B there, but make sure we give the respondent uh, on YouTube or a subscribe. Uh, you can check it out there. You can go to respondent.com as well to learn more about Greg's story and what he's doing, his advocacy, et cetera. Uh, and as well as Linktree has, all, right? This Linktree basically has all your links. This is the best place to sort of, if people want to subscribe to it all, is this the best place to find your stuff? Pretty much, yeah. It's all on Linktree. A lot of great stuff, articles. Com. There it is. Smart. I might. I, I love it. You just kept... Why not have tons of them? Because you're right. If someone's interested, they're going to find them all there. So I love this. I'm going to probably add more as well. I love that you can get all the resources there in one place. Greg, what a pleasure. And, and again, before you go, we are celebrating this man who you've had the honor of knowing and being friends with. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, the man, the birthday, the legend. Uh, thank you for all that you do. And uh, please come back anytime. And I hope let's do it. Let's plan a conversation where we can really get into the respondent more uh, in intently when you have it so hit me up anytime man look forward to it thank you andy for everything that you've done for him and everyone else who subscribes to your channel and supports you and follows you it made a difference you know i'm going to start a new anonymous channel called that gloves guy or that wellington boots guy or you know or uh, i don't know um meat potato pie planet i don't know um, <laughs> so Do the it. whole youtube world is crazy but you know what great people great loyal not not fans fans doesn't cut it support such a bad word support it's like a family it's like the fam it's the familial bond that comes uh between between celebrity and actor and and community and uh it made a difference it makes a difference so thanks to everyone and particularly thanks to you it's been great to chat and, and be on yeah thank you sir we'll have you back and to go support his new stream coming up that's got a lot of important stuff over there uh thanks again greg enjoy your day Oh my God, guys, what an amazing birthday bash we had. So many guest stars, that Brian Fellow, Jax, the real Lara B, Christopher Melcher, Jeremy from The Quartering. I'm forgetting people. Andre from Midnight's Edge. I was so many people that were coming in and out uh, of this stream. It was incredible. Uh, make sure if you haven't watched the full stream, you're going to want to hit that join button, uh, become a member. You'll be able to watch the replay of the birthday bash anytime. So much uh, interesting conversation and celebrations from so many amazing guests. Uh, Steph even came in from Italy. Uh, make sure you hit it up and watch the full show if you missed it on the replay you can always catch it there and thanks to it's kim uh and uh lewis lecca who are going to be rating next if you're watching the live you're gonna go straight there if you are watching though on the replay uh you can click the bottom of the videos before anything though click that subscribe click the bell for all alerts smash that like button and join us next time after you leave a comment appreciate all you guys again if you're watching the replay click on these if you're watching live don't touch that dial you're getting ported over to nerd report my favorite.